All right, this is the arrest affidavit. The, the uh, police officers fill these things out, and this serves as the basis for the arrest. You, and you can see how, how well they've uh, put this thing together. <laughs> it's just a yes, block of very, words. Very, very professional, very easy to read. <laughs> yeah, so now let's, let's embiggen it again here. Well, that's too much of an embiggenment. All right. So here we go. Second degree murder. That's what she's being charged with. So death penalty is not an option. The, the death penalty is for the first degree murder cases. What she's facing is 16 and three quarters years to life. Don't ask me how they came to 16 and three quarters years, but that's Florida. Maybe, maybe, maybe Andrew can shed a little more light on what happens in Florida yeah, than I can. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure what the sentencing, how they did that with the guidelines. I mean, that seems like that's some sort of guideline math. That's some sort of internal guideline math. That's yeah. definitely not a statute. A statute is not is not giving you it's not giving you quarters. Let's see how big we can make this so we don't make people go blind. Oh, that's that's kind of cool how I did that. Wait, it's split even, screen like that. I'm not even sure how you did that. Honestly, it's impressive. Huh. Well, all right. Well, we we've, we fixed it, so good for me. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that's all about. All right, let's go through your background. On February 24th, 2020, so this is literally like almost three years ago exactly, yes. which I think is, she's on, spoiler alert, she's on lawyer number six, and right. she applied to, have, well, somebody, I think the lawyer, the lawyer applied to get out of the case this time, and nobody's really sure, but it seems like the judge said, no, she's gone through six lawyers, we're too close to trial, sorry, you have to do it, Yeah, and refused to let the lawyer out of it, so... It's gone on for three years. They need to try her and they need to get it over with. Yeah. Orange County deputies responded to 4748 Franz Lane, number three, Winter Park, Florida. Where is that Winter is, Park, yeah, Florida? So, okay, so this is the Winter Park is actually a big community. I went over this on my stream. There's a bougie part of Winter Park and there's a kind of hood part of Winter Park. I'm uh, guessing this is the hood the, part. Yes. And this is also, <laughs> fun fact, fun fact, this is very near uh, the apartment that Casey Anthony's boyfriend lived in. So this Which is would very be in the near bougie that area. Yeah. No, it was not the bougie part of town. Uh, those are no. the Casey Anthony trade uh, um, case. Tony Lazaro. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you said Courtney Clenny. Never mind. No, no, no. no. Not <laughs> Courtney Clenny. That's Miami. That's <laughs> okay. Miami. Different city. Okay. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> Winter Park is within Orlando, city of Orlando. <clears throat> uh, it's north of downtown, north of Lake Eola. Uh, there's a very nice part of Winter Park that's near Rollins College. Very bougie. You know, a lot of good high-end date spots. Don't ask me how I know. And um, and then there's the, the ghetto part that's near um, uh, Full Sail, uh, Univer Full Sail University, where you know they do a lot of tech stuff. Tony Lazaro, Casey, Casey Anthony's boyfriend, went there, and um, this is actually very near there. It's in an apartment complex, uh, very near that area. Um, so it was uh, kind of sketchy. This is definitely the um, area where if you wanted to buy, let's say, some ice, uh, we'll keep it YouTube friendly. You'd be able <laughs> to pick it up. This, the kind that I put in my cocktail. Yes, the kind you that put in kind your cocktail. Of ice, yes. yes, that's exactly yes. that type of ice. Let's, <laughs> let's say that type, yes. <clears throat> oh, man. Well, see, and also, I was going to have uh, our, our dear friend Stephen N. Gosney, lawyer from Florida who handles death penalty appeals. Uh, I was going to have him on to talk a little bit about, about this and the, uh, the sentencing guidelines and things like that, but he's unable to join us because... This is in his area, and if it goes to an appeal, he might get tapped on the shoulder for this, so he has a conflict that won't let him talk about this. So just for giggles, let's hope she gets convicted and it gets appealed and Gosney gets assigned the case. <laughs> that would be that would be fantastic. That would be that would be absolutely fantastic. And then you know, after it's all said and done, we can get a you know a postmortem from yeah. Gosney on this. <laughs> Mortimer Duke says, to hell with Sarah Boone's suitcase. What about Sam Brinton's? Who's Sam Brinton? Who's Sam, I was going to say, who is Sam Britton? I do not know. I hope he's got a big suitcase and there's no oh, bodies in it. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Sam Britton is the nuclear guy, the um, <clears throat> LGBTQA++ uh, uh, nu mm. nuclear guy who stole the suitcase and, uh, yeah, and oh. continued to use it uh, <laughs> afterwards. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the one that looks like the big bald-headed dudes in the original Star Trek, the brain guys yes. in drag. Yeah. Yes, that's the dude. <laughs> okay. Which totally we respect mm -hmm. and, and love and support. 
All right. Well, as you can as you can see, this is what I was talking about. We're 20 minutes in. We've read like one sentence. Uh, <laughs> the, the caller later identified as Sarah Boone. She calls herself. We'll be listening to that in just a bit. Reportedly playing a game of hide and seek. I cannot believe she sticks with that story. Uh, well, for now. Just well, she, every wait. time she's opened her mouth, it's been hide and seek. And literally saying, let's play hide and seek. You get in this suitcase in the middle of the floor and let me zip you up. That's exactly the opposite of hide and seek. <laughs> Says you, Jeff Lawyer Man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's just an opinion, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. you know, that's just like uh, so they were playing a game of your opinion, man. Sarah and George. Not Jorge, George. Jorge, Jorge, it's Jorge. <laughs> they all call him George, so, you know, if he identifies as, if he identified as George, I'll call him George, because that's how I am. Yeah. <laughs> he, go, he goes by the George pronoun. George Torres Jr. was deceased. The caller later identified as Sarah Boone, reported playing a game of hide-and-seek. Sarah and George <laughs> the jokingly thought it would be funny if George got in the suitcase, located in the living room upstairs and passed out in her bed. Wait, see, there we go. I skipped a whole line because paragraphs. I got into the suitcase located in the living room. Sarah zipped George in the suitcase. Sarah mentioned that she and George had been consuming alcohol during the night, and she went upstairs and passed out on her bed. Yeah, she she told the police, as you saw in the video of she her outside. She was not drunk. That's yeah, what, she so, wasn't drunk. So the, the original thing was she Two or was three things of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two or three things of wine. Wait for it, because the story mm -hmm. does indeed change. Yep. <laughs> uh, so she went downstairs and passed out in her bed. She later woke up to her cell phone ringing multiple times around 11 o'clock, which also changed. Uh, she went downstairs and did not see George anywhere in the apartment. She then realized that he was possibly still inside the suitcase. Now, in the videos, if you, if you recall from the video, she said she woke up around noon. She just kind of laid in bed because she didn't want to get out of bed. Uh, got out of bed about 12.30 and then went, oh my God, she, she thought her husband was downstairs doing something. Her boy, I keep calling her husband, damn it. Her, her ex-husband. Well, because she has yeah. an ex-husband, right? So she, she has the ex too. A, she has a baby daddy, right? She got a baby yeah. daddy and she's not- The ex-husband's like, thank daddy. fuck for this. <laughs> well, actually, the, the ex-husband is actually brilliant and you're going to see yeah. uh, what, what he did. He's a nice guy. I actually believe the ex-husband is a nice guy, but he's smart because of something he does. We'll get to that. All right. So she she kind of she, excuse me, she changes her story a lot here. She went downstairs and did not see George anywhere in the apartment. Then she realized she was still possibly inside the suitcase. Sarah unzipped the suitcase and found George unresponsive and not breathing. Uh, yeah, it kind of happens after being in there for like 13 hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shortly after the 911 call, deputies arrived on scene. Orange County Fire Department confirmed that George was in fact deceased at 1307 hours. 107 yes. for you illiterates. The degenerate was found. The degenerate. God damn it. The it's, in your, it's in your head now, vices. <laughs> the, decedent, head now. the decedent was found lying. The dead guy was found lying near the front door of the residence near a blue suitcase. A small laceration was evident. Now, see again, this they had if you in her interview and in interrogation, she both times said, Oh, we had a great day. We were doing puzzles and Singing songs and painting and play. It was Kumbaya, a beautiful day. It was, yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah. Kum everywhere by ya uh, and are having a great time. But uh, no. Apparently, uh, there was a laceration on his lip, what appeared to be some bruising around his eye. And there was also some scratching on his back, which she said was due to rough sex. Ooh, hey. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. <laughs> uh, interview Sarah Boone. This is where they okay, that's the background. Interview. This is what she said during her interview that we all watched the other day on February 24, 2020, at 6 1657, that's 4 57 p.m. Detective Scott Lowen and I conducted an audio recorded interview with Sarah Boone located in my unmarked agency vehicle. Okay, we haven't seen this one. Okay, this is just a recording outside of her residence located. Da -da -da. The following is a synopsis of Sarah Boone's sworn recorded statement. I read verbatim to Sarah. I read verbatim to Sarah her constitutional Miranda warnings. Sarah and agreed. She, she understood. Ignored it, right? This and, is this yeah, is yeah. this is where you screw up right here. You ignore your Miranda warning and you continue to talk. 
that's that's always the first question I ask the chat when we when we watch interrogations where in 99.9% of the time they're sitting there alone. What is missing from this picture? Anything related to lawyer is the correct answer. Yep. <sighs> she just went she she went on her own and it did not go well. <laughs> so she understood what she understood her rights. On February 23rd, 2020, at approximately 1600 hours, Sarah was located at her residence uh, in Florida, along with her boyfriend, George Torres Jr., who also resides at the apartment. Only Sarah and George were located at the residence. Sarah's son, Lucas Boone, would sometimes be at her residence when it was her day, when it was her days per the custody agreement she has with her ex-boyfriend. Come on, cops, punctuation. Sarah said her Sarah said her and George. These are the people that are in charge of arresting you and charging you with crimes that could potentially end your life. <laughs> you can't even frickin' write a report or speak English or use grammar. Sarah said her and George were painting pictures and completing a puzzle while sharing a bottle of Woodbridge Chardonnay wine. Classy, oh, keeping it classy. Who's a Woodbridge fan out there? W's in the chat for <laughs> Woodbridge. W's in the chat for Woodbridge. Anytime wine is sold by the gallon, ain't a good sign. <laughs> On the as the evening went on, and again she said she only they only had one bottle and two or three each had two or three glasses. Bullshit. And it was you saw in the uh, police interrogation they're like, well yeah we got him on video buying two bottles down at the store and they're both empty so uh, explain that. <laughs> she could. Uh, all right. So as the evening went on, they decided to play hide and seek, a game called hide and seek. A game. Sarah hit yes. up <laughs> a game. Yeah. In case you didn't know it hide and seek. Sarah hid upstairs in her shower first and said George never came to look for her. After a while, she decided to go downstairs where she found George. Sarah and George both thought it would be funny if she zipped George into in the, the blue suitcase that was located downstairs in the living room area that had a few miscellaneous items they had both planned to donate. So, George so willing... Yeah. Like, yeah. right here? Right here, Jeff? Like, because I, I, I think she would have had a defense... To say that oh he did it himself but because yeah. she admits in her sworn in her statement here recorded statement post miranda so it's admissible um she admits that she was the one to do it so now she has her action right of of going there and doing that knowing it is it is not safe to keep someone inside of a piece of luggage you know going not recommend herself yeah if, if it had been him doing it to himself that that could have been a potential defense here right but no, it, it, is, it is clearly her taking that action. Yep. I did it. And he, he liked it, I guess. Uh, got a couple super chats here. Flux. No, we don't love or respect Sam Brinton, lol. And, uh, you know, that's that's why I love Flux. She, she says, you know, Flux is, our, Flux is our local lesbian, we call her. Flux is great. She says the LGBs and half of the T's are okay. The last half of the T's on, that's where the problems are. Can't agree with that more. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a quite true statement. And it was the alcohol, but she wasn't drunk. Well, I kind of use that excuse sometimes, too. It, it was the alcohol. <laughs> but, but I wasn't I'm, drunk. I'm not drunk. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there we go. Let's get those super chats out of the way and let's jump back into this crazy statement here because it uh, gets worse. <sighs> Where are we? You got to find your fucking place in this stupid one paragraph narrative of an entire day all right there we go a few miscellaneous items both the planet okay willingly got in the suitcase sarah zipped the suitcase up but two of jorge if george's fingers were able to stick out of the suitcase um remember again the cops were saying but how come we don't see that on the video you took zero <sighs> proof that is factual zero proof <clears throat> Good Lord. All right. So she, she said they made it so he could stick two fingers out of the suitcase. Sarah Congratulations. And George, yeah, <laughs> we're both laughing as she zipped him into the suitcase. Sarah explained the attached handle that made it easier to zip the suitcase was broken, but a paper clip was in the zipper and she was able to zip the suitcase up. A paper clip that you could possibly use to uh, latch the two ends of the zipper together so you can't unzip it too. Just saying. Yeah. No evidence of that, but 
Just saying. <laughs> it's food for thought. On February 24th, 2020, at approximately 0030 hours, that's midnight 30, that's 12.30 a.m., Sarah decided she was going to go upstairs while George was still located in the suitcase. He was still located in the suitcase. <laughs> located. Well, See, yes, cops I mean. are taught to put certain words in reports. Right. You can't say he was still in the suitcase. He was still located in the suitcase. It makes him sound yes. smarter. He was traveling inside the suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking he'd get himself out. Sarah laid down in her bed and fell asleep approximately 20 to 30 minutes after going upstairs. Sarah assumed George was going to get out of the suitcase and come to bed as well. Sarah said neither her nor George were drunk from the wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Sarah. Watch this. Watch this statement. This is going to, it's going to change. Yeah. Sarah woke up in the morning. Oh, dear God. Sarah woke up in the morning and heard her cell phone ringing multiple times, but ignored the calls. Those were the calls from her ex-husband going, when are you coming to pick up our kid? You're late. Uh, so she, and she ignored those because she apparently didn't want to pick up the kid, I guess. Uh, God damn it. Okay. Sarah and her cell phone were left, was left downstairs. Sarah said her cell phone was left downstairs from the night prior. Sarah knew her ex-husband, Brian Boone, was calling because he was the only person who called her repeatedly to see if she was going to get her son, Luke Lucas Boone, from so, school. So, so saying uh, he's the only one who cares about their son. Got it. 10-4 on that one. <laughs> Pretty much. She said she stayed upstairs for a while and assumed George was downstairs on the laptop looking for employment. Sarah said she went downstairs at approximately 1,100 hours and realized she could not find George anywhere in the apartment. Sarah freaked out. And remembered the last time she saw George was when she zipped him in the suitcase. Rut row. <laughs> dun dun dun. Sarah unzipped the suitcase and found George unresponsive, stiff and purple, as he as she called it when she in the nine one one call. <laughs> Jesus, it's crazy. Stiff woman. and purple. Yeah. Sarah called Brian back, told him George was dead, and begged him to come to her residence. Okay, Brian only so, the, so 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 time out, time out here, time out here, Jeff. Time well, out. You here. got comments. Time got out. Comments yes. about, hey, my big... boy. Hey, ex, Ooh. my boyfriend's dead. We also saw this in the Idaho four murders, um, which I I talked about, um, you know, with uh, with Andrea, and I talked about. I'm going to be talking about this again tomorrow, or not tomorrow, in in, in a, a Wednesday night uh, Eastern. But um, we see repeatedly, particularly particularly some of these ladies. They are they are calling people that are not the police it, it should you not number one call 911 mm -hmm. when you see someone is on unresponsive is that not like the the normal human response instead you call your ex and i will give it out to him he came right away right he, yeah. he immediately ran, got over there as fast as possible but it, how in your mind when somebody is dead do you not call the police right away well, and you see it in the Courtney Clanny deal too. She stabs her boy. She okay, allegedly stabbed him, but but yeah. she well, said no, no, she, no, no. she threw the knife javelin style from ten feet away and sunk it three inches. She penetrated in him with a lethal object, right? Yeah. And then she, however, called, it her, her dad, her dad, she was called her, dad her mom, mom and talked to her mom. mom for fourteen and a half minutes before she called the police. Yeah. Before. Before. Right? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> And you know what the ex is like? He, the ex is just thinking, thank fuck I dodged that and I'm too big for a suitcase. <laughs> and if you watch the interview, we watch again, we watch the interview, the interview with him outside the house, he just throws her under the bus, Does which we see wait. a little bit of it here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, downstairs, laptop, and God, trying to find your damn place in this ridiculous paragraph. Zipped in the suitcase, unresponsive on the floor. Call okay. She freaked out. And remember the last time she saw George when he zipped the suitcase? She unzipped the suitcase, found him unresponsive. Uh, she called Brian back, told him George was dead, and begged him to come to her residence. Brian only resides a few minutes away. When Brian got to the residence, he walked into the apartment, saw George unresponsive on the floor, and told Sarah that she probably ought to uh, maybe consider possibly calling 911 <laughs> at this point. Uh, <laughs> and what Brian did he do? Immediately walked out. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes, said this is on you, crazy woman. Uh, call yes. 911 like you should have in the first place. And I am removing myself, my fingerprints, my boot prints, and everything from this unit immediately, forthwith. Yep, he that, that's one thing you 